Why is it that power scaling is the hardest issue the Phantom struggles with? This isn't to drag on anyone, but a while back with the debate of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta versus Kaba, and with some community posts I've made in the past, I've come to understand that when it comes to the power scaling in the Dragon Ball Phantom, it's all about bias. This is an issue I'd like to confront as I've been meaning to for a while now. And look, not everyone is that way, mind you. Those of you who watch this series and understand the context of everything before jumping to conclusions, I applaud you. But for those of you who argue based on your personal biases, this video is for you. I really want to know how people think Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks beats Kaba no problem, but then they think Kaba can beat Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. That in of itself makes zero sense. Both cannot be true at the same time. And let me break it down. If base Kaba is equal to Vegeta's base, who's Super Saiyan God level, then whether we like it or not, base Kaba is equal to or at least relative to Super Saiyan God. So clearly, Gotenks doesn't win. Especially after what happened in the copy Vegeta arc. And as for Kaba versus Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, depending on the mind games you're willing to have with yourself, you could try to argue for either or, but the obvious winner is Gogeta. The deciding factor here is whether or not Super Saiyan 4 or Super Saiyan God is stronger than each other. Super Saiyan God being implied to have a better chance of fighting Beerus than a full power Vegito, which gives us an idea how strong it is, at least stronger than anything Vegito could do. But then we look at SSJ4, which was being used by a Goku who in his base at the beginning of GT was stronger than or equal to Kid Buu. And then his base became even stronger when he fought against first form Rildo in base. Now, if we're going solely on the anime continuity, not manga, as stupid as it may be, Kid Buu is said to be the strongest Buu. Yeah, it makes no sense, but you can't change what's been stated. However, in the manga, Buuhan is still the strongest, like he's supposed to be. But if we're going off anime continuity, then the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta vs. Kappa debate isn't even a debate. Because if Buuhan is relative to base Vegito, regardless of whether or not base Vegito would still stomp, then Kid Buu being stronger than Buuhan would only then cement how much easier it would be for GT Goku to stomp Kaba, especially in Super Saiyan 4. Considering that base Goku is at least 50 times stronger than Kid Buu, thus Gogeta could literally trip and fall and accidentally defeat Kaba. But let's just say that we aren't going off of terrible writing, and that Buhan is still the strongest Buu. Then regardless, SSJ4 Goku by the end of GT was still hundreds, if not thousands of times stronger than he was in base. SSJ4 Gogeta is overdoing it by the time of the Shadow Dragon Saga, considering with Goku we go from regular SSJ4 to full power, to then ultra full power. At this point, Goku is already unreasonably busted. Then add the multiplier of doing fusion with Vegeta, it doesn't matter if Kaba is in Super Saiyan 2 who or not. He gets crumpled up like trash. And if you disagree, fine. I can't stop you from glazing Kaba. But it's all jokes, I get it, it's mostly a meme for a reason. But besides the meme, and while we're on the topic of GT Goku, there is something I wanted to address. There is no way a majority of people think that Vegeta in the My Bulma scene is stronger than Super Saiyan 1 GT Goku. And all this debate will have a point in the end, just wait, I think. Like I've said, I already established that GT Goku in base is way stronger than Kid Buu. Being Super Saiyan 1, GT Goku dog walks this Vegeta who only surpassed Super Saiyan 3 Goku for a small amount of time. But I understand why people choose what they chose. Because of bias. People hate GT so much, they're willing to choose Vegeta in this scenario, and they're willing to put Kaba over GT Gogeta. But then, not Gotenks. Seriously, if anybody can actually tell me a good reason for why this is the case, please comment down below. And that's not the only issue with power scaling either. Some people simply don't watch or care to understand things. And I have a few examples of that too. Again, when I'm not trolling, I won't sit here and pretend to have some intellectual superiority over other people's viewpoints on a series. But some things I'll never stop arguing for. Look at the incident with Krillin beam clashing with Blue Goku. Immediately, a lot of people were like, Oh, this means that Krillin is relative to Blue. He's gotta be up there with them now. Completely ignoring the context of this scene. The whole point was for Goku to see how Krillin would handle going against an overwhelming force like Blue. What plan would Krillin come up with? Or how would he get through this situation? It wasn't a genuine struggle. And Goku was obviously holding back. 
Throughout their sparring session, Gohan and Aitin are even talking about how battles aren't just based on power, trying to emphasize how important it is to always have a plan. And so, the lesson that Krillin learns here is, when faced against odds like Goku, is to rely on his teammates' help. But instead, a lot of people interpreted the scene as, Goku's going all out, Krillin's keeping up, he's been training with the Whis, I think. Come on. I understand that Krillin was doing his thing the entire episode up until that point, but they didn't mean to make it seem like he was blue level. And last, but not least, this poll speaks for itself. I'm not even going to sit here and explain this one. I'm just hoping people go back, watch both the movies, hell, even watch Super, watch the whole arc again, and just understand how diabolically wrong this poll is. Although, when it comes to Super, it's kind of hard to blame people for coming to the wrong conclusion. Especially when characters are given crazy power boost for the hell of it, looking at Master Roshi, Android 17, and even Gohan. Plus, it's Dragon Ball. Power scaling a lot of the time is pulling out meaningless numbers and trying to measure a character's strength based on a limited amount of vague facts. Characters will always be as strong as they're needed to be in Dragon Ball, and pinning down an exact number for measurement is impossible. And I'm not trying to bash anyone who measures characters off of multipliers and whatnot. I mean, I literally just did it with GT Goku. I'm just being honest. I don't think any of the writers were thinking about it that hard and constantly doing the math. So without any real confirmation, people could still argue Kaba over Gogeta. But let's just be serious for a second. Like... Really? You think Krillin is Super Saiyan God level? Give the writers some credit, it's not like power scaling is entirely useless and they do whatever they want, no matter how contradictory that may seem at times. But, when they explain to you why something is happening in a show, you can't just ignore it. And listen, I would have also been willing to admit their faults if the case truly was Krillin being God level. Just like how I was willing to admit that Android 17's level of strength is humongous cap. I mean, he's at least fortunate enough to have infinite energy, and we haven't really seen him in a long time up until the tournament arc, so it's not as bad as Krillin if Krillin were God level but it's still Cap. So on one hand, I understand people who jump to conclusions, but on the other, there's some truth to actually thinking about things first. But this is sort of why I'm hoping that Dragon Ball will eventually lean towards just making future fights about hacks, strategy, technique, or whatever else. I don't want a million new forms until it gets to a point where people genuinely have to ask, who's stronger, Super Saiyan 7 or Super Beast Gohan? And that's one thing I liked about the fight between Gohan and Goku during their sparring match on Beerus' planet, because it showed that although Gohan has the power to fight with UI Goku, he lacks the martial arts experience to ultimately come out on top. And honestly, forms like God and Super Saiyan 4 were cool because of how powerful and unique they were at the time. And yes, you could say that with every new form, but 4 and God were different in a way. For the longest time, 3 was the peak. It was the very best you could achieve, and the only way to get stronger was through fusion or if you're Gohan having your potential unlocked. But even that seems reasonable because it seems normal in the way Gohan and Krillin have had their potential unlocked before, and making it a new form entirely really isn't out of the realm of normality we're used to. As for Super Saiyan 4 though, going beyond 3 was over the top. It was extreme to think of because even 3 was already pushing things. And so, 4 was given the most unique transformation scene and look of all the forms. It stood out as the ultimate transformation, the peak of Saiyan evolution. And so, if they then introduced 5 only a year later, we'd probably have been like, alright, that's cool, but the number is getting a little high now. So instead, we got Super Saiyan God, something entirely unique and powerful in its own way. It was a really cool step forward for the movie, but anything beyond that or 4 was starting to feel like overkill. At least in my opinion. The issue with getting a new transformation every other arc started to give us fatigue, because it made the ones that came before them lose their wow factor in quick succession. Going from God to Blue to Blue Evolution, Ultra Instinct, Mastered Ultra Instinct to Ultra Ego, it starts to feel like too much. Like how much stronger can the characters get until they're too broken for their own good? Or power scaling just becomes a guessing game. And don't get me wrong, all of these forms are really cool. I'm just saying, it'd be better if instead of a new form, Goku and Vegeta took the time to master what they already have, and just utilize different ways of defeating an opponent, instead of having to break another limit and find a new form. Which, if Jiren is anything to go off of, then we might be in the right in assuming that this is something that can happen soon. And I believe this is an issue that also plays a part into why Android 17 was given an unreasonable power boost, and even Gohan. I don't care what anyone says, training or not, regardless of what he did in Super, getting his form as soon as he did, the way he did, was not justified. 
I get it, I always get hate for saying it, but deep down, you know I'm right. I mean, if you disagree, it's not a big deal. This is just how I feel. But that'll be it for this video, so I don't continue rambling on for who knows how long. I want to thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. Leave a like, subscribe, comment down below your opinions, or don't. That's cool. And I'll see you guys in the next video.